Hello and welcome to another edition of Essential Cardano 360, your monthly roundup of the latest news and developments from across the Cardano ecosystem. Now, before we dive in, please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and let's get all the great news about Cardano spread as wide as possible. Now, with so much happening across the ecosystem these days, there's a bit of a community focus to today's show. So make sure you stick around to meet members of the UTXO Alliance, see Explorer, Gimbal Labs and Crosschain Dex Blueshift, currently creating something of a buzz across the socials. First up, Voltaire. Now, since IOG's governance workshop in Colorado, the team has been working hard, collaborating with the community to ensure everyone's voices are heard, helping to ignite new ideas and build the framework for the future. IOG's communications manager, Adi Gerard and engagement lead, Sheldon Hunt, caught up to share some of the latest developments on SIP1694, along with an update from Sunday Swap's Pi Lanningham on what he's been contributing to the governance conversation. The age of Voltaire advances participatory governance for the Cardano ecosystem. And at the heart of that is individual empowerment through democratic consent. SIP 1694 was released in November, and since it's been released, the globe and the community have been talking about what this means in terms of governance for them and the future of Cardano in general. That SIP proposes a governance framework, or MVG, Minimal Viable Governance, that the community is collaborating on and discussing as they think about the future. Joining me today is Sheldon Hunt, who's been leading this community effort through a number of different workshops and a number of different tactics. How are you today, Sheldon? Hey, Addy. I'm great. It's wonderful to be here with you again and to, to chat here on Cardano 360. So thank you again for having me. It's always awesome to hear what's going on with the community. I understand that there's a lot of news with the community workshops. Can you share with us the latest? Yes, yes, there have been some pretty big happenings. So going back to kind of the initial beginning of all of this, we had uh, an application process that went out to community members around the world, and the interest was gigantic. So we ended up having a little more than 100 applications come in for hosting of global workshops, which was incredible. And so together with Emergo uh, and the Cardano Foundation, we went through all of the applications. We selected those that we thought were maybe the best fit and the best place with the best vision and those that had an understanding of the SIP. And so we've gone ahead and approved 24 in-person events around the world. And we've got great coverage here from California to South Korea, from Norway to South Africa, we've got full global spread and it's really, really exciting. In addition to those in-person workshop, we also have a little more than 20 virtual events as well. So these are virtual workshops that will also be ongoing around the world to coincide with the actual in-person workshops. I understand that there are a couple of major events happening from the founding entities. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. So the three founding entities are going ahead and having their own workshops as well. And so the first one coming up is with the Cardano Foundation in Zug, Switzerland, and that's gonna be on June 3rd. So very exciting. And that'll be followed up on June 16th in Tokyo, Japan, where Emergo are hosting their own workshop. And then finally, IO is hosting a workshop in Edinburgh, Scotland, and that is gonna be July 11th to the 12th. We're gonna be coalescing all of the outputs into one glorious final to really see through the, the SIP process and to really launch the Age of Voltaire. How exciting to have a final draft of the SIP and, and have everybody engaged in reviewing that. I heard that there might be some exciting other secret news at Edinburgh. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Yes, I can. So it's still very much work in progress, but we have a plan to be doing a hackathon that will coincide with the actual workshop there in Edinburgh. And the details of this hackathon are still being worked out, but I encourage everyone to stay up on all of the latest announcements, and we're going to have more coming to you in the next couple of days. And so uh, it's very exciting. That's awesome. I'm so excited to hear how quickly the community has come together to talk about the SIP and what governance they want and how they see the future coming together for them and for the Cardano. I was told that we've even had some community members do their own workshops. The community has really taken this up on their own and really championed 
what SIP 1694 means to them and in the wider Cardano community. And so we've had some incredible individual efforts and some standout champions in the community who have hosted their own workshops, both in person and virtually. Actually, not too long ago, I had a chance to chat with Pi from Sunday Swap to get the latest from him when it comes to the virtual workshops that he's been running. And so here is our conversation. So we were really lucky to have you in Colorado. I wanted to get your sense. Uh, what was your experience of being there in person working on SIP 1694? Yeah, it was, it was a real pleasure to be flown out to Colorado for the Longmont workshop. There was so many great people from the Cardano community there. Obviously not everybody, you know, but um, it was really great being there kind of at the start of that Voltaire kickoff. And there was just such an energy of kind of a, a beginning and defining the question. And it's really great to see it kind of roll into this whole set of community workshops to continue not just asking those questions, but now starting to answer the questions that we that we started to ask there. So MVG is incredibly important, and we really appreciate your contributions to it. So what do you see at the end of all of this? MVG, or minimum viable governance, is a really interesting idea that we could rabbit hole ourselves or nerd snipe ourselves into oblivion trying to design the perfect system, right? And so the idea that we as a community can take this problem iteratively and bootstrap ourselves into a simple, minimal system and then iterate on from there is really exciting and really beautiful to me. And so what I see at the end of the road here is defining something and achieving something that puts power into the hands of the community, maybe not in the ideal way or like the, you know, perfect 10 year plan way that some people might want to work directly towards, but in kind of that first step that we can then iterate on and start building that 10 year plan. Um, and I think that that's going to be a really powerful way to approach this problem and it's going to allow us to build a much more robust governance in the long term because we can start to see how things are playing out in the real world. So you already hosted a community workshop in April uh, and so how did that go? Yeah, I hosted a very small workshop, a virtual workshop online to discuss a CIP that I'm working on around the metadata that we attach to governance actions and defining kind of a community standard for what that looks like so that tooling can build on top of that standard. Um, I actually owe the community kind of a follow-up to that. So we did kind of a first draft where we iterated on it, and now we're going to go back and collate the input that we got from that first um, meeting. So I'll be doing that in the next week or two. Um, so keep an eye out on my Twitter if you're interested in attending that. But it went really well. We had representatives from a couple major wallets there and members of the community that contributed to the discussion and came up with a, a fairly good first draft. So the whole recording for that is also on the Sunday Swap YouTube. It was kind of just a blast hosting and, and leading something like that for the community. That's excellent. That's excellent. And so for the next workshop, could you provide a little more detail? Like when are you planning on hosting it? Will it be virtual? Yeah, so I'm going to do like a small virtual follow-up. It's just kind of a Zoom call with a bunch of people. I don't have a fixed date for that set yet, but, you know, as my schedule allows sometime in the next few weeks. And then uh, I'm going to be doing a larger workshop in person here in New York focused on, you know, we'll, we'll go where the conversation leads us because I don't want to put too many guardrails on it. But absent any guiding force, we'll try to focus on how are we going to measure successful governance. So we'll talk about things like what metrics should we be using for whether the outcome of governance is actually aligned with what the, the community wants, right? Kind of these secondary checks to just make sure that governance is healthy. Or how do we measure how people are engaged? You know, what typical thresholds for governance participation should we be looking for? You know, voter turnout in the U.S. is, I think, somewhere around like 60 percent on, on main year elections. Voter turnout at Catalyst is 11 percent. Voter turnout on something like a Uniswap vote is 
you know, somewhere sometimes between three and five percent. So which of which of these kind of thresholds should we be looking at and kind of measuring ourselves against to understand if the Voltaire governance process is healthy? Now, if there's a really cool idea that comes up in the discussion, we'll kind of lead where that where that goes. But um, that's kind of be kind of going to be the the framing narrative of the of the workshop. And if you want to know more details about that workshop and you want to sign up and maybe attend yourself. There's a Google form that you can sign up now that's in the description of this video, or you can find it on my Twitter. Look forward to seeing you there. And as details develop, as we kind of solidify the venue and things like that, I'll announce more through my Twitter. Excellent. So this is all incredible and super exciting. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today. Wonderful to have you a part of this community. And it's really great to have you leading these discussions. It's, it's fantastic. So thank you again. Yeah, thanks for having me on. That was so great to hear from Pi. And it seems like this is just the beginning of the community workshops. Yes, it very much is just the beginning. So we've got a lot more coming down the pipeline. We've already had a few in-person events that have already finished up, and we've got quite a lot more coming our way. So it's very exciting. Now, where would the community go to find out what events are happening local to them, or how could they engage? The best way to find out if there's an event happening in your area is to go onto the Essential Cardano website. We have there an interactive map, and you can scroll, you can spin the globe, and you can see where a pin is dropped close to where you are. And if there's a pin there, you can click on it and you'll see all the information related to that in-person event. If you are living in an area or you're in a spot where the event has already happened, please don't fret because we will be doing virtual events all around the world as well. So if you've missed out, don't hesitate to stay plugged into the virtual events and we would really love to have your input. That's awesome. I know there's a lot of events that are on the map on Essential Cardano, but what about those people who aren't a part of that? Can they host their own workshop? Yes, yes. So these are workshops that we had wanted to highlight, but these are not at all the end of the conversation, and these are not the limitations to what the community can do. So we are very much encouraging everyone to get out there and continue to think about and talk about SIP 1694, what it means to them personally, to their communities, and what it means to the wider Cardano ecosystem. So please do, if you want to host your own in-person workshops, your virtual workshops, do so. Do put together your thoughts and ideas and, and collect them and be ready to share those. Where can people go to provide that feedback or find out more information? So to find out more information and to provide your own feedback, I would encourage everybody to go on to the Essential Cardano website as well as the Cardano forum. And of course, there's always Twitter. So between the IO Twitter, uh, Emergo, and the CF, please also carry on your own community discussions on Twitter. I know there's been a lot of activity thus far, and I'm expecting there to be a lot more going forward. In addition to just going to the, the source as well, to go read up on the SIP on GitHub and to add your own comments there. So we're very much looking forward to having a lot more community involvement in the coming weeks and months ahead. Sheldon, this has just been so fantastic to find out all the things that are happening around this participatory governance and what's going on with the community. Thanks so much for coming out. Can't wait to learn more. Thank you so much for having me, Addy, and look forward to everything we do going forward. Now, as we see the continuing evolution of SIP 1694, dozens of community members have stepped up to host workshops. And as Sheldon mentioned, there's lots more ahead. So let's hear from some of the people helping make those happen. Hi, I'm Jose de Gamboa. I've been in Cardano for two years. I started out with the Catalyst in several roles there, and I realized the importance of the decentralized governance to make Cardano sustainable on time. Uh, that's why we're hosting a 1694 workshop in Bogota, Colombia on May 27. Hope to see you there. Hi there, my name is Lawrence and I've been involved in Cardano since 2021. Voltaire and blockchain governance is a critical aspect of Cardano's long-term viability and sustainability. Therefore, I have decided to set up a local governance workshop in Toronto on June 15th. It is a hybrid event, so you can attend in person or online. Please come out and support your local Cardano community and have your say in this very important topic. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yuki Oishi. I have been involved with Cardano for five years as an ambassador in this BOM 
Catholic proposal, enabling the Japanese community to persist, participate in governance without competition during the both year is why I became an ambassador. We are organizing workshops in Kyoto on 27th May and Fukuoka on 10th June. Please come and join us. どうも、美味しいこと言うたと申します。私は5年前からアンバスターとして SPO としてカタリストの提案者として体に関わっています。日本のコミュニティがガバナンスにうまく関わっていけるようにすること、これが私がアンバスターになった理由です。5月27日に京都で、6月10日に福岡でワークショップを開催します。ぜひお越しください。Hello, my name is Adam Rush. I've been studying blockchain since 2017 and always loved the vision of Cardano. I'm excited to see the community coming together to run Cardano as a DAO in the Voltaire era. I'm hosting the Cardano CIP 1694 Governance Workshop in Chicago. We're meeting on Saturday, June 10th at the Hilton Garden Inn, Chicago O'Hare Airport. Come for the day or book a room and make a weekend out of it. We're even planning a welcome reception on Friday the night before. I hope you can join us and help add direction to the CIP process. Thanks. Hey, everybody. My name is James Dunseeth. I'm a co founder of Gimbal Labs and I'm hosting a Voltaire Governance Workshop in Worcester, Massachusetts on June 8th, 2023. I hope you can join us. Voltaire is an unprecedented opportunity for us to find out if we're the people we've been waiting for. The questions we're going to ask together are going to drive Cardano and hopefully the world into a new era. Let's do it together. See you soon. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Hansen, a staking pool operator of Ada Norpool. And together with Thomas Lindset from Crypto Labs, we look forward to hosting a SIP 1694 workshop in Norway. Uh, I've been passionate about governance on Cardano since 2018, and the age of Voltaire means we have the opportunity to create an amazing start to governance that we can build upon. Our workshop will be hosted the 19th of June in the Midgard Viking Center, Horten. Yes, there will be a Viking feast. Yes, there will be merchandise themed appropriately. Seats are limited, so reach out if you're interested. I hope to see you there to put your name and your voice into this historic event. Hey guys, m a r n a n d e l i here. I'm very glad to announce that I will be hosting La Plata Buenos Aires Argentina workshop. In this opportunity, we will discuss about the SIP 1694. I have been working in the Cardano ecosystem for more than one year as an LOA student. I think it's very important to have a document when we set the values, the rules, and the next steps in the governance of Cardano. So, I hope to see you there to discuss this idea and walk through this new era called it Voltaire. So, thanks to Easton, Jose, Mauro, Lawrence, Utah, Adam, and James for that. And indeed to all of you hosting or joining the Voltaire Community Workshops. The UTXO Alliance is an initiative created to kickstart collaboration with individuals and organizations working to make the UTXO model more scalable, secure, and interoperable, and to drive broader adoption of blockchain technology. IOG's Ignacio Calderon de la Barca sat down with some Alliance members to learn more about their ongoing work. Hi, I am Ignacio. I work at the developer relations team at Input Output. And today I am happy to be joined by UTXO Alliance members, including Wolfram Blockchain Labs, Topol, Alifium, Nervous Network, and Ergo. The UTXO Alliance is a collaboration of Layer 1 blockchains and other projects that share a business model deeply rooted in the UTXO computing paradigm. Our mission is to advance the UTXO model to make it more secure. Scalable and find paths towards interoperability at the same time as growing and merging communities. Could each of you please tell us and the community about your project? Yeah, Ergo is a smart contract blockchain, and our net goal is to try to create programmable money with clear assumptions. And basically, the UTXO model fits really well into that paradigm because. Uh, you know, the smart contracts ultimately break down to a series of microservices. And if it's built properly, it can be distributed in a P2P way where, you know, we have the potential to disrupt this notion of global contracts and get more towards P2P money. The Nervous Network has been in development for about five years now and live for a little over three. We like to say that we're building infrastructure for the decentralized economy. Uh, Nervo CKV is a blockchain that moves almost all functionality, including the logic to authorize transactions, to the smart contract layer where it can be customized by devs and chosen by users. 
So at Wolfram Blockchain Labs, we're actually not building a blockchain, but we're building tools to support the advancement of science of blockchains. And to that extent, we've joined the UTXO Alliance to help support our partners in developing their own tools for building blockchain protocols. Here at Topol, we're building an interoperable blockchain protocol with a mission to enable sustainable, accessible, and inclusive economies by disrupting existing exploitative systems. Our philosophy is to marry radical ease of use with novel technical developments to drive this change. Alephium is the first uh, sharded level one blockchain scaling and enhancing on proof of work and UTXO technologies. We love to participate in the UTXO Alliance because we strongly believe that the UTXO is a very strong foundation to build uh, these decentralized systems. And we think a cross-chain, multi-chain world will be more resilient. So we are very cooperative in nature and we enjoy a lot the sharing and permeating of ideas that is happening inside of the UTXO Alliance. Given that there is huge value in the different range of approaches proposed by each Alliance member, can you tell the community how your project adds to that? Well, I think that uh, when you're talking about open source frameworks, the question is what solutions make sense where? And having projects you know, that are researching similar problems in parallel uh, simply you know, increase the probability of finding good solutions for the right problem. And, and so in, in that sense, I think there's a tremendous amount of overlap that uh, different projects can learn from each other in terms of solving common problems. You know, there are a lot of different approaches to scaling and some of them make sense in uh, different applications, different places. And so having basic primitives that, you know, we can learn, research, watch each other grow certainly accelerates everybody as a whole. Identifying points of compatibility and standards through the UTXO Alliance is very important for us because we envision a world where all of these different blockchains are seamless to use and interconnected and when we're using UTXOs with payment channels and swaps, this is a backbone of a robust and sustainable solution. And together with the other members of the Alliance, we can champion the values of this, this paradigm and drive awareness in developer communities to tackle all the very challenging problems that we, we face in building this world. From the Wolfram Blockchain Labs perspective, our goals are to help advance the science of blockchains. And so from that point of view, really, one, we have the pleasure of getting into the room with a bunch of brilliant people, all building different ways of, of approaching a blockchain ecosystem. And so as one of our goals of, of advancing the science of blockchains, obviously people need to learn more about them. And that's all the way from the basic level to the deep technical rabbit holes. And wherever you may find yourself in that spectrum, I think there's a real opportunity to digest some of the things coming out of the UTXO Alliance and deliver it in a way that people can make use of it, learn about blockchains, and then potentially run that technical rabbit hole and build their own uh, applications on top of them. From Topol's perspective, we really believe that the UTXO ecosystem offers an untapped opportunity for interoperability and collaboration. So while the EVM pulls that ecosystem of L2s together, the UTXO model at the same time can pull all of our chains together where we can work together collaboratively rather than in individual silos. So that might look like common standards, interoperable features, novel ideas, Ultimately, it's based on the idea that what we can create together will be better and stronger than what we can create individually. We strongly believe in the strength of the UTXO as the technical funding uh, and sane foundations for decentralized systems. And we think like the cross-chain, multi-chain world will be more resilient. So we are, by definition, cooperative in nature. And the ethos of open source and keep it simple, stupid, are really running deep in Alephium. So we really think that good ideas can permeate everywhere, especially in tech adjacent communities. So that's what we we like very much, the UTXO Alliance. Steph, I know that Wolfram and Topol have been working hard on chain science. Can you tell us a little bit more on that? We're really excited to be hosting, along with Topol as a main sponsor of the Chain Science Conference, a chance to bring everybody into the room from academic researchers to blockchain builders and more. 
Um, we're getting together June 15th through the 17th in Boston for a chance to everybody to, to meet each other, to get into person, something that we don't do that often these days, and really expand upon some of the things talked about in the UTXO lines, but much more broadly as well across the blockchain ecosystem. And let me just direct you to the website, chainscience.org, where you can find all the information you need about the conference. Great. Thanks, everyone, for coming to the show and for telling us more about your projects. So if you want to learn more about the UTXO Alliance, please join our community platforms and subscribe to our first newsletter, which is launching at the end of the month where you can find news about each member and also keep an eye on our socials, which will be a lot more active in the upcoming months. So thanks to Ignacio and the folks from Ergo, Nervos, Topol, Wolfram Blockchain Labs, Alephium, and all the members of the UTXO Alliance for the collaboration. If you want to learn more about the Alliance and the upcoming Chain Science Conference, you'll find all the links in the show notes below. Stake pool operators play a critical role in maintaining the Cardano network and supporting ecosystem growth. IOG's Becky Hopwood is on the front lines every day, engaging with SPOs to understand how IOG can best support this important community. For this month 360, Becky sat down with Sea Explorer's CEO Lucas Barter to hear more about one of the ecosystem's most fully featured explorers and Lucas's experience of building their platform and running a stake pool on Cardano. Hi everyone, Becky here from the community and ecosystem team at IOG. Today we have with us Lucas Barta, CEO of Cardanians and developer of one of the first Cardano Explorers, C Explorer, previously known as Adapools. Lucas, can you tell us a bit more about your background? Hi everyone, hi Becky, thanks for your invitation. Hello all the Cardano community. Yes, I'm Lucas, Lucas Barta, the CEO and founder of Cardanians. I'm sure almost everyone knows some of our work. We are one of the first Cardano state pool operators, part of ITN, Testnet, and so on. And we also developed one of the first Cardano explorers, uh, which was adapools.org, the explorer. And we are writing a tons of educational material and, and building a community. Our Czech community has today more than 12,000 people, which I'm, I'm personally uh, really proud of. And uh, it was amazing, the growth uh, through the years. And today I would like to introduce you our C-Explorer.io. Uh, Thanks, Lucas. Your team certainly keeps itself busy within the ecosystem. So as you mentioned, C-Explorer is one of the largest in the Cardano ecosystem. Could you tell us a bit more about how you came to build this tool and what solutions it offers the community? At the beginning, the reason was basically personal. As a stake pool operator, uh, we wanted to have some overview of how pools are doing compared to others. And our IT guy was super productive. And within two or three days, the first version of ADA pools was out. And then it was no brainer. There was a huge demand and uh, support from the community. So we enjoyed it. We, we were motivated. It was a clear decision uh, to keep going and improving the tool and uh, keeping track with the growth of uh, Cardano ecosystem. It's been going a couple of years now and now everyone knows our uh, C Explorer and there is still enough space to make some improvements. And in terms of what we offer, it is the most advanced Explorer that provides in a friendly way most of the information that happens in Cardano ecosystem and blockchain. Uh, we do not force anyone to pay anything. Everything works purely on the volunteers and that's the beauty of community project. And that's why we like it and when we support it. And I would like to add one more thing. Uh, the main programmer of uh, C Explorer is Joseph and we are trying to make it as decentralized uh, is possible. So he's right uh, to make changes, make decisions, and I'm only some kind of advisor for him. We want to keep our staking activity and this community activity separated. Yeah, you've been consistently improving and developing the platform over the last few years. Um, you offer education, analytics, and obviously the Pool Explorer. For those who haven't used it before, could you give us some insight into what your tool offers its users and maybe focusing on the stake pool operator community in particular? 
Yes, we've invested uh, an incredible amount of time in development. In fact, there's so much that even I'm sometimes surprised by the features we have there. I definitely uh, recommend everyone to visit the page and go through, go around and try to find something which fits you uh, most. My favorite feature is DEX aggregation and volume and share in between. I like to keep track of active accounts, block usage and comparison within epochs. And I always look forward to reading new articles from our colleague Jaromir Tessar. There's a lot of there. I definitely recommend it to everyone. And how I said, try to look around, uh, look a little bit deeper because we have a lot of hidden data and so on. And you can, you can find uh, everything you need. Yeah, I think today it is uh, the most complex explorer in the whole Cardano ecosystem. You've discussed what it offers to the more technical users, but I wonder if you could also dive into how ADA holders or those delegating to stake pools within the Cardano ecosystem might be able to benefit from the tool. Yes, you're right. The basis of the Explorer is actually data about the pools themselves with complete history. So a user can find the pool he wants to delegate to through us and then compare to others compare performance and learn something about what pools are and what they offer. I can fail to mention another cool feature and that's the watch list. You can simply add your favorite pools or your favorite tokens into this watch list or wallets and so on and uh, look into it every day. So to be honest, I'm checking this, for example, four or five times per day, uh, checking this watch list. I really enjoy it. You can also use our Telegram channel, Telegram bot, and you can find everything on the page. Just moving into the future, are there any other features that you anticipate building or is there somewhere that people can log a request for a new feature on Cardano Explorer? Yes, for sure. I think colleagues are constantly improving this tool themselves but uh, adding things around, although it is true that the, with the size of the project, a lot of work is no longer directly visible at the first glance, but it's rather in the background. But definitely, whatever the market is, we are still working in any case. Ideas are welcome always, and the best way is to put it on GitHub, and there are feature requests. So I recommend you to use this function and we can check it and, and discuss and then implement. Thanks, Lucas. How can the community support the ongoing development of C Explorer and who should they get in touch with if they have a question or would like some support? So development and maintenance in general requires a lot of resources. You are right. C Explorer has always been a matter of heart of us and one of our contributions to the Cardano community. So we have a lot of contributors from pool operators and beyond who support the project. And I'm extremely grateful for this contribution. Of course, we would be happy for anyone who supports our multi-year effort. So you can delegate to our pool, which, which is called Pools. It's connected directly to this site, to C Explorer. But you can also use standard donate address and, and support us in this way. But the delegating is a win-win situation yeah, for both sides. By all means, follow the project on Twitter and Discord. And I think that's the most important. So thanks, Becky. And I think from me, from my side, thanks for the whole Cardiano community. And thanks for the fans. And keep going. And I wish you the best. Thanks, Lucas, for joining us today. It's been great to catch up with you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. So thanks to Lucas for that. And also a shout out to Adastat, Cardano Scan and Pool Tool, all great projects doing their bit to keep the community informed with great data on stake pools, network health and more. Now, if you're an SPO, don't forget to sign up for our SPO Digest and join IOG's monthly SPO calls. You can find the links below. Let's meet with a couple more ecosystem projects now from two very different areas. Gimbal Labs is a Project Catalyst funded education and learning project catering for Plutus developers of all abilities. BlueShift is a new cross-chain DEX and index which has been getting lots of community attention in recent months. Over to Anita for more. Hello 
everyone. My name is Anita. I'm a part of ecosystem and community team at IOG. I'm happy to say that today with us, I have James, who is a co-founder of Gimbal Labs, and Igor, who is a co-founder of Blue Shift. So we have really interesting interviews coming up. I want first to kick off with James from Gimbal Labs. And hello, James. Welcome to Cardano 360. Thanks, Anita, and thanks for having me. Could you kick off by uh, saying a little bit about yourself and your background and also about the projects you're currently involved with? My name is James. My professional journey has taken me through classrooms in New York City and Worcester, Massachusetts, where I taught algebra and bike repair and different advisory and creative writing programs for years. Then I left the classroom to work in a couple of ed tech startups each of which were focused on both project-based learning, student agency, and also how technical tools were changing the student and teacher experience. So as I was working on all of that and doing a lot of teacher training, I was starting to learn about blockchain and I was starting to see these different parallels between these two fields, right? We have blockchain kind of upending the global financial industry. We have ed tech changing the role of teachers in the classroom. And so when I heard about Project Catalyst, it was really interesting to me because it felt like there was an opportunity to kind of bridge these two worlds that I was observing. And in the summer of 2020, I joined the first cohort of Project Catalyst. So I was there in Fund One and had a proposal that was focused on project-based learning. I met my co-founders of Gimbal Labs, Roberto Morano and Julie Montag. We started Gimbal Labs in late 2020, and we've been focused on distributed infrastructure and project-based learning ever since. It's really interesting that education seems to be a high-level problem across the world. Can you share a little bit more how Bluetooth project-based learning is addressing this issue? You know, it's true. We do hear a lot about education these days. We hear about it in Web3. We hear about it in the world beyond. And I think a lot of us are aware that the way education works in most places right now is outdated. So we have a really exciting opportunity right now. As we upgrade the global financial system, maybe we can upgrade education too. Right? As we empower people with better access to financial tools, maybe we can teach people in a way that provides a greater level of agency, a greater level of participation, and, and really encourages people not just to take the information that people are giving them, right, in kind of the teacher talks to the student sort of way, but we can shift towards teachers and students really working together and playing both roles at the same time to engage in a new level of inquiry. I think if that happens, we're going to see a different kind of empowerment. And we know it's exactly what we need to see, right? We, we hear about a talent shortage. We, we know that it's hard to find developers. And that's mind blowing to me, right? We live in a world of 8 billion people. How can it be that there's such a thing as a talent shortage? How did we get here? I think we have a really exciting opportunity to change that narrative. Yeah, this sounds really promising. And uh, when it comes to project-based uh, learning, can you share how it's going to make an immediate progress in 2023? We rolled out the fourth iteration of Plutus project-based learning back in March, and it continues to roll out. We organize the course into four strands. The first one is onboarding. The next one is building up background knowledge. Next comes specializing where students start to focus on what they really want to focus on. And finally, we get to contribution, which is the real goal of any of our project-based learning courses. We really want to support people to become contributors to real projects. So, as of May 2023, we've rolled out the onboarding and building background parts of Plutus PBL, and we're just starting to move into the specializing and contribution parts of the course. Considering that people are collaborating during the project-based learning course, 
what are the soft skills that are crucial for attending these courses? I'm so excited that you asked that. You know, that's one of the huge benefits of project-based learning is it gives us a chance to talk to each other, to ask each other questions, and to collaborate. And of course, to be a contributor to most projects in today's world, you have to be able to collaborate with other people. But another big part of it is that when we collaborate and when we engage in hard questions together, we build up a new kind of trust. And what blockchain systems really ask of us is to find you know, new levels of trust with people we're working with. So I'm really excited about that alignment between PBL and blockchain, and we're watching it happen in real time. For example, we get together every Wednesday and Thursday for what we call Plutus PBL Live Coding. It's an open session. Anybody can attend, and people are starting to ask each other really good questions. What if this? How could I improve that? How can we create a system that accomplishes A or B or C without sacrificing X or Y or Z? And when, when you have these conversations, the, the sort of deep understanding of problems that emerges is very different from if I just told you something about, say, decentralized identity or the UTXO model, right? We really believe that people need to get their hands on these things. And when they do, they develop that deeper understanding. 100%. And looking towards the future, what we can expect from your project? So the main goal of Plutus project-based learning is to support people to become contributors to real projects. And so in the future, that's, that's our North Star, right? We're really trying to make sure that as people learn, they're able to take that and do something real with it. We're also expanding our definition of contribution beyond just development. Obviously, the blockchain industry, the Cardano ecosystem, we need more developers who know how to build with these tools. But we also need to expand the definition of developers. We want people to understand you know, enough of the software stack to be a project manager or a solution designer. And that doesn't always involve directly writing code, but you know, I, I think sometimes I notice that there's this false binary distinction between devs and non-devs when really that's not true, right? Development is a continuum. For example, I, I consider myself a developer. Am I a good enough one to build a blockchain protocol from scratch? Absolutely not. You know, that's, those, are, those are the geniuses building the tools that we're all building upon. But if we can all see ourselves as somewhere along that journey, understanding enough of the tech to have new ideas, that's what's really exciting to us. Any closing remarks or anything else you would like to share with the community? If anything that I'm sharing resonates with you, I really want to encourage anybody watching this to check out the course. It's live right now at PlutusPBL.io. It's being delivered not only in English, but in six other languages, French, Indonesian, Japanese, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So there's a lot of access for people around the world. We're not translating the course with AI. We're translating it with real people in each of these places. So if you've been looking for access to learning and, and maybe English is not your first language, not only are we providing materials in these languages, but we have whole communities of people who are ready to talk to you and guide you along the journey. We meet every Wednesday and Thursday at 1430 UTC for live coding sessions. You can see the calendar and registration links at PlutusPBL.io. And those sessions are recorded. So even if you're just looking for a chance to learn about how we do things, there's a really nice way to get started there. But reach out if you have questions, if you want to build something, or if you want to start learning, we're ready for you to join us on the journey. James, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us today and thank you for sharing such inspiring thoughts about Plutus project-based learning. We are looking forward to hear more about your project in the future. Until then, you can follow them and see the link in the description below. Next with us is Igor, who is a co-founder of BlueShift. Igor, welcome to the show. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about BlueShift? 
Hi, absolutely. Hi, everybody. It's Igor Mikhailov based out of Amsterdam. I'm a co-founder of BlueShift, which is our Web3 native enterprise. is a cross-chain decentralized exchange with a quite unique approach. So instead of relying on individual pairs of cryptocurrencies, BlueShift uses so-called liquidity portfolios. So to put it simply, BlueShift is like a universal currency exchange for digital assets. It's an advanced platform that seamlessly connects different blockchain networks, thereby making the process of swapping your digital currencies easier, faster and safer. Thank you. And I have a question regarding the challenges faced when trying to connect uh, CNT to other chains. Can you tell us a little bit more how BlueShift is addressing this? With BlueShift, it's as if you have a universal exchange that operates everywhere, eliminating the need to navigate through multiple steps of bridging and wrapping. So it's basically an innovation designed to simplify one's digital currency transactions. And when it comes to challenges to connect Cardano native tokens to the rest of the world by means of different types of, again, as I said, bridging and wrapping, in our case, we are solving it differently. And as Cardano is probably the strongest and most committed community in the crypto space, the technology that Cardano provides, we believe, is something that we need to expose to other ecosystems. The key challenge is basically the increased interconnectedness and different types of obstacles on the way to making this increased interconnectedness user-friendly enough, uh, secure and fast enough. So the ability to connect CNTs to other chains is currently limited by this sort of complexity. And same time, this complexity is also partly the problem of relying on existing centralized alternatives and they compromise typically the security and privacy of um, our users. Our solution is something that provides Cardano users with a seamless, reliable and efficient one-click approach to move some of the tokens in and out of the Cardano ecosystem. And it's quite fast, so it's basically you know something like 10 seconds per uh, one transaction. It is safe and it's also quite user-friendly because from one interface, one can swap cross chains without the need to navigate various different applications. Thank you. And when it comes to collaboration with the community, could you tell us a little bit more about Cardano Index and how you conducted the research and collaboration with Cardano community? So together with the help of the Cardano community, we selected top performing Cardano projects. Community engagement phase took around two months, which was followed by a two month long validation process where we looked at various qualitative and quantitative criteria, such as uh, stake liquidity, community engagement, trading volume, depth of white papers, technology that those projects offer. And when we finalized the portfolio composition and launched the Cardano index, featuring tokens of Fi Finance, Endmaker, and Cornucopias. The Cardano index is currently the number two by TVL on BlueShift DEX, and it's uh, one of our top performing portfolios. So we promote it as a portfolio of the best Cardano projects and give it a cross-chain exposure. We also drive Cardano's growth by creating additional utility to the Cardano's index LP tokens. So a user can also stake them using Wi-Fi to earn additional rewards. And we'll be adding new projects based on community's input with a focus on developing secondary market and driving on-chain activity. Thank you. How does the cross-chain swap feature of BlueShift work? How it is beneficial for users? And can you tell us about the impact that creates in Cardano ecosystem? So BlueShift's cross-chain swap feature between Cardano and other blockchain networks, it's basically a one-click type of action. And I think it's a game changer for users that brings significant value to Cardano's ecosystem. So with BlueShift going cross-chain, it is faster, user-friendly and safer than traditional solutions. So users can realize cross-chain swaps in one click as opposed to maybe 10 plus typically. Transaction takes around 10 seconds. Assets from different chains are swapped without wrapping or synthetic assets, which makes it much more secure. And maybe it's good to at this point have a look at the quick demo that we have. All right, so here you see the composition of our portfolios currently. You have different types of indices. And again, those indices are akin to traditional index funds. So it's carefully chosen tokens that you can get exposure to. This one is a cross-chain portfolio where we have some Matic, which is quite well performing. So you see that Cardano index is growing in its TVL. It's quite popular. It's, as I said, number two in TVL. and uh, 
very active on a daily basis. Multiple trades are happening. So we're going to do now a swap. So from end maker to, and there we go. Yes, so from a maker to Magic Polygon, right? So from Cardano to Polygon in one interface, in one click. There we go. Swapping, gonna confirm it, and it will take around 10 seconds for the entire operation. Yes, almost done. Yeah, there we go. So the swap is complete. So you see that under 10 seconds, we have swapped from Cardano to Polygon. And I think it's quite advanced. All right. So, well, you know, this feature is particularly valuable, I think, for users who hold assets across multiple blockchains. And nowadays, that's, I think, almost everyone. Those people typically want to easily move them between networks. And on the other side, also asset providers, projects that offer those tokens want to also get cross-chain exposure. And that's what BlueShift offers in a fast, secure, transparent way, making it a desirable solution for, I think, multiple users. And I think also for Cardano itself, the cross-chain swap feature increases the liquidity across Cardano network overall, which benefits the entire ecosystem and community, increasing uh, network's interoperability in the end. Thank you for this demo. And looking ahead, what does the future hold for BlueShift? We have several key directions that we pursue. So we are already present on Cardano C1, Algorand A1, Kava, Polygon, and going to Neon and BNB shortly. We will also enter Cardano Native as a, as a DEX and connect Cardano Native to Cardano C1 and other parts of the different ecosystems that we're already present on. So we will be connecting the biggest blockchains between each other and allowing our ecosystem to grow and providing tokens that are listed in our DEX that additional exposure and additional hand when it comes to getting liquidity from other networks. We'll also be creating network of ecosystem indices featuring best projects for each blockchain. We as well have launchpad types of initiatives and multiple ecosystems. So we will be bringing in a sort of alpha portfolios with some of the startup type of projects, which are high risk, high reward, but same time carefully curated and would be uh, coming through our launchpad process. I would like to invite all Cardano users to come and explore the Cardano index and our cross-chain solution overall to participate in the incentivized campaign on our cross-chain mainnet. So thanks very much and uh, I look forward to seeing you in one way or the other. Thank you, Igor, so much for sharing such insightful and valuable info about BlueShift and the way it's shaping the future of blockchain. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Anita. Be sure to keep an eye on BlueShift. You can find the link in the description below. And until the next time, stay tuned and stay curious. Thank you. Now, we're always looking for ecosystem projects building on Cardano to feature on 360. So if you want to join us, you'll find a link below. That's nearly it for this month, but in case you missed it, this month the team at IOG also successfully tagged and released Node version 8.0.0 for use on Mainnet. The latest version introduces new features and optimizations, including a new governance action that can be used to conduct on-chain SPO polls. And you can read more about this important early step in on-chain governance in the blog from the Cardano Foundation, link below. The Cardano Foundation also hosted a Cardano meetup in London. It was a great evening, bringing together a number of community members and folks from IOG, Emergo and the CF, and projects like IMX Identity, Hosky, Pavia, Cornucopia's Game, World Mobile, and more. And for more opportunities to connect with the wider community, check out the Cardano meetup page in the links below. With a regular release cadence, the first improvement upgrade to LACE launched this month, with LACE 1.1 bringing new features like enabling 12 or 15 word recovery and native token pricing. Expect more enhancements to LACE to come very soon. If you haven't had the chance to watch it yet, be sure to check out the recent video with analyst firm Masari, featuring Charles Hoskinson and CF CEO Fred Grigard, discussing their Q1 State of Cardano report, unpacking the latest growth statistics and overall health of the network. Link is below. 
We're continuing to publish blog posts on the IOG website and Essential Cardano about all our products. This month, we shared an update from the Atala team, an announcement about Midnight's new head of marketing, and we'll be sure to bring him on the show soon, and a summary of some of the most recent development upgrades on Cardano that resulted in improvements across all of the core areas of interoperability, scalability, and sustainability. We're also sharing great content over on our Twitter, like a thread we shared this month, which did a deep dive into Cardano native tokens, what they are, how they're used, and how they differ from digital assets on other platforms. So if you like quick and concise nuggets of information like this, be sure to follow us on Twitter. And last but not least, special congratulations to IOG Senior Research Fellow and Edinburgh University School of Informatics Professor of Theoretical Science, Philip Wadler, who was this month elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. Now, fellowships of the Royal Society are granted to individuals who have made, quotes, a substantial contribution to the improvement of natural knowledge, including mathematics, engineering science and medical science. Now, Professor Wadler was a key figure in the development of the Haskell programming language. He was also co-creator of Cardano's smart contract language, Plutus. And his ideas have influenced numerous other languages, including C Sharp, Go, Rust, Scala and Swift. Now, notable past fellows include Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Albert Einstein, Charles Babbage, Dorothy Hodgkin and Stephen Hawking. That's quite remarkable company. So congratulations, Phil, and thank you for all your incredible work. That's it for this month. Before we go, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and stay tuned to IOG's social channels for all the latest news, including further updates on Marlow at the time of recording, teeing up for mainnet launch. Exciting times. See you very soon.